Hello Oilers fans, Austin here and welcome to the Edmonton Oilers Road to the Stanley Cup Final, a numbers breakdown and discussion. Yes, uh, if you missed yesterday's video, I did the exact same thing with the Florida Panthers, kind of outlined their road to the Stanley Cup Final, who they went up against, what their numbers looked like, some normal numbers, some advanced numbers. Uh, if you're into a lot of the numbers and math and stuff, then I'm assuming you're going to enjoy this video. If you're not, I'll try and do my best to explain what is good and what is bad based on the Oilers numbers. If you missed yesterday's video, I will leave a link in the description below. You can click on that, go check that out, and then come back to this video if you'd like. Now, quick disclaimer as well. This is not a series preview video. I am not comparing both teams against each other. This is strictly just about the Oilers, who they've played so far in the postseason, um, and kind of what they've done successfully to make it to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time since 2006. And if, if you're looking for more in-depth uh, discussion or analysis about the Oilers' play style or the Florida Panthers' play style too, kind of their offensive zone, neutral zone, and defensive zone structure. Uh, I am not the person that is smart enough to totally discuss all of that, uh, but hockey psychology is. Some of you, you probably know who hockey psychology is on YouTube. I will leave a link uh, in the description once again to their YouTube channel. Um, I'm not affiliated with him at all. I just really, really love his content. I love his breakdowns, how teams play, how they're successful, how they pick apart opponents. And uh, he has talked um, at length about the Oilers and Panthers. You, you can click on his videos, check those out. They are amazing. Highly recommend them. But today's video, like I mentioned, this is just about the Oilers, their numbers, who they went up against, and what I think they've done successfully to make it to the postseason or I guess the Stanley Cup Finals. They've been in the postseason since April. All right, so with that, that intro out of the way, just make sure you hit that like button that goes a long way in supporting the channel. And let's kind of discuss the Oilers now. You're going to look at this and you're going to be like, what the heck is going on on the screen here? There are so many numbers. So everything on the left side of the screen, that is all from Sport Logic. And then everything that is in the yellow writing here, the yellow font, that's from Natural Stat Trick. This is for the postseason, how the Oilers rank in these categories among other teams that made the playoffs. And then, of course, the, the pictures that you see on the left side of the screen, uh, I have one graphic from Sport Logic for the Oilers and Kings series. I will have another graphic for the Oilers and Canucks series. Now, as of the recording of this video, I could not find a graphic showcasing how the Oilers played against the Dallas Stars, but I still will discuss that series. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about a lot of the Oilers players, uh, you know, who's producing, who hasn't produced a lot. And then I'll talk about Stuart Skinner as well. And then, of course, all the numbers here. So if you need to pause the video at any point, if it's a little overwhelming, I do apologize. I'm trying to provide some numbers here and not just like, you know, bombard your senses with all this stuff on the screen. But this was like the most efficient way that I could do it in OBS. So I do apologize if it looks a little messy here. So we'll start with the Oilers against the Kings. Now, Sport Logic, their model, projected the Oilers to win that series in five games, and they did. If you look at that series, the Oilers won in five. Uh, ozone possession, LA actually had more offensive zone possession than the Edmonton Oilers in the series, 34-22 to 32-14. However, when you start to really break down the quality of the opportunities, the Oilers completely dominated the LA Kings. Slot shots were 71 to 49 in favor of the Oilers. Cycle chances 51 to 33 in favor of the Oilers. The expected goals 16.7 to 10.3 in favor of the Oilers. And goals, the Oilers outpaced their expected goals by six, and the LA Kings outpaced their expected goals by three. The Oilers took that series in five, outscored the LA Kings 22 to 13. And again, even though LA had more puck possession and offensive zone time uh the Oilers they dominated in terms of generating the higher danger the high danger looks and uh they kind of wiped the floor against the LA Kings and that is not to disrespect the LA Kings they're a very good defensive team uh the LA Kings they just they played that one three one for the first three and a half games of that series and then game four they decided you know what we're going to open this up and then game five of course they also opened it up but by then it was too late the Oilers were in full control now, the second round, the Oilers played the Vancouver Canucks. The Oilers in this series, uh, they owned the offensive zone possession. The Oilers had a ton of ozone time, 53-37 to 46-07. Uh, the Sport Logic model had the Oilers in six. Uh, the Oilers ended up winning that series in seven. They were down 3-2 in the series. They came back, won two straight to take it. Slot shots were 91 to 69 in favor of Edmonton. Rush chances. The Oilers limited the Vancouver Canucks to just 26 rush chances. Uh, the 
Oilers themselves had 48. The expected goals in that series were 21.4 to 15.7 in favor of Edmonton. The actual goals were 24 to 20. Of course, Stuart Skinner struggled very early in that series. However, game six and seven, he was instrumental in the Oilers being able to come back and win. And Stuart Skinner, I feel like as the playoffs have progressed, he started to, you know, he's he's finding a bit of a groove here. Hopefully there's a long layoff before the start of the cup finals doesn't shake anything in his play. Because as that series against Dallas was progressing, he was just getting better and better. So hopefully he's able to continue his strong play. And uh, the Vancouver Canucks, for as strong as a team they were, they really they put the Oilers to the brink of elimination. They had two opportunities to eliminate them. But Edmonton, through strong possession play and driving the high danger looks and driving, you know, the the high, you know, the the, the higher quality opportunities they were able to come out on top. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have a graphic about the Oilers and Dallas Stars series. However, I will kind of show the Oilers offense versus the Panthers defense very quickly here. So the Panthers defense in the regular season, uh, expected goals, they were first in defensive rating. So they were the best at, you know, limiting expected goals against. Scoring chances first, high danger chances first, slot shots first, inner slot shots first, passes to the slot first, and offensive zone possession time second. Now the Oilers offense uh, in the regular season, they rank first in pretty much every, every category. Passes to the slot, they rank second, and offensive possession time ranked first. So you have basically the best defensive team in the NHL going up against the best offensive team in the NHL. The old saying, the best defense, you know, defense wins championships. We're going to see if that comes to fruition. Uh, I will mention that I do think the Dallas Stars, uh, you know, defensively, they were also very similar in terms of just how good of a defensive team they were. They were one of the highest scoring teams in the NHL. They were the central division winners. And uh, the Oilers have actually defeated two division winners throughout the postseason. Of course, Vancouver, they won the Pacific. Dallas won the central. Edmonton was able to overcome both teams. Edmonton took out Dallas in six. Uh, but I did want to show that. I know this isn't exactly a comparison video or how these two teams stack up up between the Panthers and Oilers, but I just wanted to give you guys some extra stats. That is from Stathletes, by the way. Megan Chaka, uh, co-founder of Stathletes. She posted this on X or Twitter.com. Definitely give Megan Chaka a follow if you are into advanced numbers. She posts stuff all the time that is super intriguing and fascinating. I love it. Now, when we look at the Oilers forward group, this is where I think Edmonton probably has a big advantage, but I'll discuss that more in length in tomorrow's video. But Connor McDavid right now, he has 31 points, 5 goals, 26 assists. He's a plus 7. Leon Dreisaitl, 10 goals, 18 assists, 28 points. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is having the best playoffs of his entire career and some of the best hockey I've ever seen Ryan Nugent Hopkins play, by the way. So he has 6 goals, 14 assists, 20 points, plus 3. Zach Hyman, he has 14 playoff goals. Uh, only only four assists, but you know what? He's been kind of doing that all season. Uh, the fact that he's scoring goals is most important. 18 points in 18 games, plus nine rating. He has the best plus minus rating out of all the forward group. Evander Kane, four goals, four assists, eight points. Now he is a little bit banged up. Knobloch does expect him to play game one. He did only play four and a half minutes in game six against the Dallas Stars. Might have flared up that, that sports hernia that he's been dealing with all year. So hopefully Evander Kane is good to go. Matias Yanmark, two goals, two assists, four points. He has a zero rating. Adam Henrique, two goals, two assists, four points. Again, a zero. Connor Brown, he's been playing great. That series against Dallas, he was phenomenal. Hopefully he can continue that play against the Florida Panthers. One goal, three assists, four points in 12 games. A plus two rating. Dylan Holloway, uh, he started off the playoffs pretty hot. Uh, he's he's kind of slowed down here. Um, hasn't been able to generate as much offense as I think Knobloch was hoping, playing him with Dreisaitl for an extended period against the Dallas Stars. Uh, if, if Holloway is given more top six ice time, you're going to want to see him produce just a little bit more. I really like Dylan Holloway's play. I like his play away from the puck. I like his play in the neutral zone. I like his speed and tenacity, and he does generate and create chances in the offensive zone. Just need a little bit of a finishing touch there. He has four points. He's a plus two. And then Warren Fogle, who's been a healthy scratch for a couple games now, three straight games actually, or two straight, three straight, I don't remember. Um, he's played 15 games, one goal, two assists, three points, and he's a minus eight. He has the worst plus minus of the forward group. So it's not surprising that he hasn't been playing as much. The Oilers are very top heavy in terms of their offensive production. You have your top four uh, forwards scoring all the goals and getting all the points. If Florida, if they're able to contain even half of those players, if they're able to contain, let's say Hyman and McDavid. Well, you try settle Nugent Hopkins got to really pick up some slack here. Uh, but that's not saying that the Oilers don't have depth. Of course, Evander Kane has four goals, Yanmark with a couple, Henrique with two, Holloway three. They have players up and down their lineup that can put the puck in the net. 
Now, the next thing we're going to look at is Oilers defenseman. And look at Evan Bouchard, 27 points in 18 games played. He's a plus 14 rating. That is the best on the team um, for points wise and plus minus. Matias Ekholm, four goals, three assists, seven points. He's a plus eight. Brett Kulak has five points. He's had a good playoffs in my personal opinion. He's a plus one. And then, of course, you have uh, Cody Cece, Darnell Nurse, um, Four points and three points, respectively, minus five for Cody CC and uh, minus 13 for Darnell Nurse. And then you have Vinny DeArnay, who uh, has one assist in 15 games, and he's a minus eight rating. Now, for some reason, I don't see Philip Broberg here. Uh, I did have Broberg included, but it must have got cut off at the bottom of the screen. So my apologies. Philip Broberg has played three games. He has one goal, and I believe he's a plus one rating. Philip Broberg, he's come in, and he has done an admirable job in place of Vinny DeArnay. If Bill Broberg plays as well as he did against the Dallas Stars uh, with Cody Cece as his partner, I really like Empton's chances here. And then, of course, Stuart Skinner. We're going to look at the goaltending stats for the Oilers. 11-5 and record for Stu. 2.50 goals against average, which is great. And an 897 save percentage. Of course, again, a lot of that is skewed from how poorly he played earlier in that Canucks series. The Oilers are very good at shot suppression. So, you know, when you have a lot of goals going in in a short amount of time, of course, you know, it takes a little while to get the save percentage back up to a good level. That goals against, though, that's a good, in a good spot, 2.50. And I believe his goals saved above expected. On money, puck is around four or five. So again, that's also a positive sign for Stuart Skinner. Now, looking at the actual stats here, um, this is for the postseason. The Oilers' power play ranks first at at thirty-seven point three percent. Their penalty kill also ranks first, ninety-three point nine percent. Uh, they average 25 shots against per game, which ranks third. Like I mentioned, very good at shot suppression, just like the Florida Panthers. The Empton Oilers are very good at limiting the amount of shots against them. Uh, their defensive play is very, very strong. And it's going to have to be very strong. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be the best it's been throughout the entire playoffs because the Florida Panthers, they are aggressive. They just attack in wave after wave after wave. This is not a team that just sits back in the neutral zone like LA. This is not a team that defensively in their own zone uh, plays kind of a passive box the way the Vancouver Canucks did. Uh, this is a team that whether they're in the offensive zone, neutral zone, or defensive zone, they are constant. Like, it is man-on-man. Man. They are all over you at all times. So the Edmonton Oilers, they're going to have to manage the puck here. Edmonton's expected goals for in all situations in the postseason, 54.28%, which ranks fourth. High Danger Corsi 4 is 54.52%, which ranks fourth. Shots four per game, uh, 53 points, or sorry, just shots four is 53.66%. That's shots four percentage, ranks fourth. Uh, shots per game, they rank sixth in the NHL in the postseason, 28.9 shots on goal per game. Corsi 4 in all situations ranks sixth. Scoring chances for ranks seventh. And a save percentage ranks 8th at 89.56%. Of course, when we take a look at this stuff, uh, you know, there isn't a whole lot of, like, glaring um, stats that the Oilers are struggling in other than maybe the team save percentage. Team save percentage in all situations, 89.56. And, of course, scoring chances for percentage ranks 7th. Again, this is not terrible. The Oilers rank better than fifth in pretty much most of these categories. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, the, the best part of the Oilers game has obviously been their special teams, but they are no slouch at even strength. This is a team that can uh, outmatch you and outplay you at five on five. Uh, and we saw that against the Dallas Stars. Other than game six, obviously game six against Dallas. Um, Dallas dominated that entire game. Edmonton was able to hang on. They bent, but they didn't break. The Oilers, uh, since that Canucks series, you know, really learning how to get a lead and hold on to the lead. I still don't feel comfortable when the team has a lead, uh, but you know, ever since Dallas in game four went up to nothing, they didn't hold a lead after Edmonton tied it. And uh, you know, for the Edmonton Oilers going up against the Florida Panthers, this is not going to be an easy opponent. This is the hardest opponent that they're going to face throughout the entire postseason. And uh, you know, looking at all the numbers, of course, we'll we'll run through uh, them a little bit more tomorrow in the Oilers versus Panthers series preview, uh, kind of showcase where each team truly does excel, how they match up against each other, and what my prediction will be. But that is not in today's video. Today was just about discussing the numbers and the Oilers' path to the Cup.
final. Now, if you liked today's video and you're excited for more content, like I said, make sure you hit that like button. If you really liked it and you're not yet subscribed, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, good friendly reminder, I will be live streaming every single game in the Stanley Cup Finals. And if you want to check out some of my other live streams, if you're not sure about what the live streams look like or what the vibes are, if you're not yet a subscriber or if you've never tuned into one of them, uh, all of my live streams are available on my YouTube channel. If you just go to Austin Hockey, then you can click on like home videos, shorts, live. If you click on live, all of my previous broadcasts are there. You can check them out. Uh, um, if it's something you're interested in, I'm very excited about streaming the cup finals. Uh, depending on how the series shakes out, you're probably going to see me ball my eyes out again. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Obviously, people can make fun of me for that too. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm very excited for the series to start. I'm excited for the series preview video, which will be out tomorrow. If you're still watching up to this point, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Before you head out, tell someone that you love them for me, okay? Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. I'll see you in tomorrow's series preview video. See you later, oil country.